If you look at nature, you see that each organism basically ages at a different rate. Some do it in very rapidly after a few days, some can do it after uh, several decades like we do, and some can do it after centuries. And so the differences between different organisms is mind-boggling. So by better understanding the basis of this process, we hope to better understand how we, as human beings, age, and better also understand better why age-associated pathologies actually arise. I did my undergraduate studies in Ben-Gurion University in the Negev. I did my PhD at uh, the Weizmann Institute studying uh, development of biology. Then I switched fields and I moved to the United States to do my postdoc at Stanford. I, instead of doing developmental biology, I studied aging. I also switched animal models. Uh, instead of doing mice, I started doing uh, fish biology, the Torquus fish, which is a new model for aging research. And now I move back to Israel, uh, where I open my lab at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And we're using this fish now to better understand how organisms age. The aging field is actually, or surprisingly, a young science. So only in the past 25 years, we know that by specific manipulations of, of genetics or the environment, we can truly take an organism and slow the rate of aging. So we have the short-lived non-vertebrates. We have Drosophila yeast and flies, and we have the vertebrates, which are uh, the classical models, uh, mouse and zebrafish. So yeast, worms, and flies, they're the real champions of the aging field because they're, they're superb genetic models and they're very, very short-lived. However, these organisms, because they're non-vertebrates, they lack specific features like adaptive immune system, uh, bones, blood, higher cognition. To ask these complex questions using classical models, which are uh, zebrafish or mice, we have to wait for a very long period of time. The natural lifespan of these organisms is about four or five years, two and a half in case of mice. So we try to bridge this gap by trying to find a naturally short-lived vertebrate. And this is what I've done in my postdoc. We took the Torquus killifish, which was studied in the past two decades for aging research. We developed genome editing in this fish and this basically allows us to model specific age-associated diseases. For example, if we have a mutation that causes Alzheimer's or a mutation that causes another age-associated disease, we can take these mutations from human, model it in the killifish, and better understand in a very, very uh, rapid timeline how this disease progress with aging and maybe also try to fix it. Aging is the primary risk factor for almost every disease or pathology that will eventually kill us. This includes cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's, cancer. And nowadays, what we do as biologists is we study each disease separately. And the funding sources are also focused on, you know, there's a heart institute, there's a, there's a brain institute. And we believe that by better understanding the molecular basis of aging, we could potentially better understand why all these diseases occur only as we age and maybe find something which is common to all these pathologies and we won't need to solve each disease separately if we can slow down the process of aging and potentially delay the onset of all these diseases at the same time. The killifish community is actually even younger than the aging field. We're only about 30 groups uh, worldwide. So we're currently the only lab in Israel uh, at the Hebrew University that are studying uh, the aging processes using the killifish. And hopefully in the next few years, this community will grow and I will see this as my personal success. If in the next 10 years, this field will triple, quadruple, and we'll be able to actually revolutionize how we're studying uh, aging.